the more I hear this sound, the just more it just infuriates me, okay? First of all, the precedent thing. Well, if that was going to be your case, then nothing would ever happen. There has to be a first time for everything. If our entire world was based on, well, it's never happened before, then literally nothing would ever get done. And he said, you really have to make sure it's worth it. You don't think this is worth it? They cheated to a World Series. Your entire fan base is disgusted outside of Houston. Every player is disgusted outside of an Astro. If not now, then when? So that precedent thing just drives me up a wall. Lazy, lame excuse. The second thing that infuriates me is this arrogance that there's no life beyond our own. Well, everybody's going to know the scandal. Bull, we'll move on to the next thing eventually. But 100 years from now, 200 years from now, you take that championship away, then they'll have to look up why. But eventually it'll get forgotten like every other scandal. And that, that 2017 Astros will always be there. At least with an asterisk, I'd have to go look up and find out what the heck is that it, it's there for. But if we're to stand alone, do you really think that 200 years from now it's going to resonate as much as it does right now? Weak. I, I really, I'm starting to lean towards the fact that the end game of this is that Manfred's out of a job. I think he really has to contemplate resigning. He is actually coming off as a buffoon to where the owners will not be able to support him. And don't he, doesn't he realize that he keeps dropping the ball to the point that the owners will just lose you? Because if baseball continues to look like a jerk, he's going to be the face of that, and the owners will lose him. He's lost the players already, and if he's lost the players, not based on some controversial call Michael or a fine or a suspension, he lost them because a championship was ill-gotten gain. The players are disgusted. Disgusted with him. Don't you think the owners feel the same way outside of Crane? And Crane's probably still ticked off. He got fined the five million. Once he loses the owners, he loses his job. He the, can't survive this. this. I don't. You, in essence, you're right. His job is to protect the owners, but outwardly, his job is to protect that shield. He's the commissioner of Major League Baseball, and he has embarrassed the game of baseball. And can we, can we stop with, oh, well, Roger Goodell makes billions of dollars for the NFL. It, he, I'm, I would love to be able to sell a network on the NFL. All right? I'm not saying Roger Goodell is, 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 is as smart as I am or anything. Of course, he's a lot smarter than me. But the point is he's selling the NFL. He's selling ratings, okay? He's got the ability to sell uh, a, a sport that is at least the second most popular sport in the country. So stop. I'm sure somebody else can do that job. And they would have done a better investigation and it handled the situation better. I just don't think that you judge everybody by their worst moment. And this is not a proud but time this is a for Manfred. Moment. I get it, but it is not destroying the sport. I told you last week, I believe it's going to help the sport this year. It's going to make every Astro Road game well, but that's a not must how you want to do it. It doesn't matter. But because that will eventually go away and it's going to further embarrass baseball when they're making these uh, these exciting games where they're throwing at Astros and in essence the players that, that they get thrown at will get more of a punishment than the Astros will. I don't and in essence baseball will be protecting the Houston Astros throughout the 2020 season where if you breathe on them wrong you get thrown out of games or get suspended yourself. I just, uh, I personally don't think he should be fired. I think he's done a lot of good things for baseball. Well, I think he's thinking some. outside he's the box. Things. The Marlin thing was an embarrassment and the way he handled the Marlin thing was embarrassing too when he went on Levitard and got attacked by Levitard and could not handle himself. So I'm sorry for sitting there and talking about him doing a great job. I don't think he's done a great job. He's done some good, but the bad he's done could do irreparable damage to this sport. I think the sport is stronger than that, but I hear what you're saying. It was I just strong, you know, it was, it's stronger than what? It, it, but when Bud Selig was buffooning around, the sport was strong. And Bud Selig made the Hall of Fame. So you're saying he buffooning around. Obviously, somebody thought he belonged in the Hall of but Fame. But you couldn't tell me that there was a huge disconnect. But, with, with the game but and the again, growth of the game when but, Bud Selig was, was the commissioner. But your idealistic view of what a commissioner is is different than their real job. Bud Selig increased franchise values and they kept making money. And it's not like the right. it's not and like would football. Would you consider him? A, would you consider Bud Selig was a great commissioner? I think he did a lot of good things. I think he, you know, well, the way, a lot of good way, things. Nixon did a lot of good things, and he had to resign. You know what? But I think that Nixon was a good president. I'm but, sorry, I but, do. Right, a, but a good president that still had to resign, I right? get it, but I don't think that this falls under Manfred having well, to... But, but, you, know, what, what, you, know what Manfred would? you know what Manfred has to resign? When Jerry Reinsdorf picks up the phone call, phone and says, you know what, you got to go. And, Otherwise, I would not be, and you're right, and I'm not saying he should volunteer his resignation because he's a lot of things he can do to try to save it. I'm just saying if I was an owner and you put it to a vote now, if, if I got a phone call they'd from... They'd say stay. I, I would, but I would say go. And, and you know what? If he starts losing the owners, he might, Michael. 
Because who's, who's employs all these players that are upset? And why these players are upset? Because some of them felt like they were robbed of championships. You don't think the Steinbrenners are red hot right now? Now, they'll play ball because they're professional, but don't you think that Hal, especially Hank, isn't red hot that they might have missed an opportunity at I'm winning sure. a championship? I'm sure. You don't think the Dodgers' ownership and, all the, and everybody in that division? But did they miss the championship because of Rob Manfred or because the Astros cheated? No, but they, no because the Astros cheated and got away with it. And then you have the audacity as the commissioner to tell us that these were stringent, that these were tough penalties that he handed down? Come on. No way. Well, the, the championship's already been tainted. It's already been stained. We don't have to take it away. Everybody in the world knows that they cheated and, and that the 2017 championship was ill-gotten game. But it's history. Going to remember that, Michael? Are we going to remember it when the next controversy happens? Or are they going to win another championship in 2020 and 2021 and it's going to go the way the New England Patriots went where, oh, maybe they cheated, but look how good they are, who cares? And the other thing that gets brought up is, well, we still remember the Black Sox scandal from 100 years ago. Yeah, eight players lost their careers, including Shoeless Joe Jackson, who was one of, if not the best players in baseball at the time. Who, who was disciplined in this? A.J. Hinch? You know, good luck comparing him to Shoeless Joe Jackson. Rob Manfred, I disagree with Don on this, is not losing his job uh, as long as he continues to make the owners money. He's not losing his job. The players don't control Rob Manfred's employment. But the owners do, and if he loses the owners... Right. But leave that aside for a second. There's still something he can do. Can he communicate with the Players Association? Can he reopen the investigation for 2019? Can he strip them of the 2017 title? Sure he can. There's this attitude of the players can get away with it because they've got this great union. So that means I can still go out and cheat in 2020, knowing what's going to happen to me. I can't get suspended. The only guy that could end up getting suspended, I guess, right now is their new general manager and Dusty Baker. Yeah. Yeah, they can cheat so again. So what's to stop me from doing it? Dusty Baker's on a one-year contract. Uh, 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 Just make sure Dusty doesn't know about it. Do it behind his back. But nothing can happen to me. And also, if you're the players, you've already had your reputation and resume completely soiled. You're never getting it back. So cheat more. Win okay. again. Because the best thing that could happen to the Astros is to win this year. We all just assume, well, that's the punishment. You don't get to go to the Hall of Fame. That's the punishment. You, want, you ended up not winning a championship. I mean, we're, we're assuming that the punishment is they've been shamed into this. I wonder how much shame they really feel. They're aggravated about it, but they're circling the wagons now. They're probably going to use it now as a, as a motivating factor to go out and win in 2020. And mark my words, if they win in 2020, the narrative is going to be the Astros overcame the controversy yep. and came together and won a title. And exactly what would the punishment be then? And Dusty Baker should use that as the motivational, you know, a tool. Oh, I'm sure he will be. Well, everybody hates you. They think you stink. There's no way you could win without cheating. Let's show them. That, that He doesn't even have to give a long speech. And I do believe, though, Don, that they're embarrassed. So, well, he who's a, be a, who's a I, better person, though? I guess the, the guy who finally came out and said it, even if it took a while to find religion, or the guy who kept everything quiet and forced other players to take PDs to be on a level well, playing ground? I agree with you. He shouldn't say anything. But the I, I think the reason the analogy is faulty on, on your part, Michael, is that it's not like Ortiz started spilling his guts after he left the Red Sox. No, I He never spoke ever no, about I, anybody I understand, PEDs. but by his silence, his silence, other guys were forced to do PDs right. to be on equal No, ground. I understand that. But Mike Fires, if he stayed on the Astros, maybe he never says a word. And, and but he, he wanted doesn't. the Astros to stop because he's now an opponent. But I think his problem is not that he didn't say anything. Why is he saying something now? If he, if he wanted to be chirpy, why wasn't he chirpy then? Because I, no one was chirpy. I, no, not I, even I, Brian McCann, who supposedly didn't want to but, do it. But, Nobody was chirpy. But right. now he's facing that team. Well, I guess what David Ortiz is saying is if you couldn't say anything then, you shouldn't say anything now. But he's wrong because he wasn't facing I, the team now. No, I, I, uh, but I fundamentally agree with you. But obviously David Ortiz disagrees with you. He thinks that if you're going to keep your mouth shut, not say anything while you're benefiting from it, that you should just keep your mouth shut. But there were good Period. men in that clubhouse that didn't say but a word. I think H.A. Hinch is a good guy. He let it well, go on. Well, here's my angle, is that why would Fires have any leg to stand on to stop it? If McCann couldn't stop it, right. if the manager couldn't stop it, how do we know Fires didn't try to say something and was shot down? So that's where David Ortiz is wrong. Fire silence might have been necessary just to be able to stay in that clubhouse. He wasn't a superstar by any stretch of the imagination. 
And if McCann couldn't stop it, who was a veteran, if A.J. Hinch couldn't stop it, who was, the, who was the manager of the team that actually went to the lengths of breaking the monitors because he was so powerless to stop it, then how did Fires have any chance to say anything 